Just over the weekend, the Biden administration said that they will not be a part of whatever response that Israel has for Iran. Is this enough to prevent this from escalating? Everything depends on what Netanyahu chooses to do next. If he just took President Biden's advice, and this is one of the times I'm actually advocating that, that, that they do listen to him, because then this matter will not escalate beyond where it currently is based on the current circumstances. But if Israel does choose to go and strike targets in Iran, and especially if it kills people, whether it's troops or uh, civilians, then I think that Iran will absolutely fire back. And let me just be clear uh, that when Iran, with this, the way it fired back there, the attack over the weekend, they only went after military targets that they knew were headed right into the Iron Dome, the strength of the Israeli defenses. In a retaliation, they would probably go after weaker targets that were not defended as well, and they would use their better equipment instead of just these slow-moving drones. So there's a lot at stake here, and we need to keep this from escalating. That's actually a fascinating point. Let me kind of drill down on that again. That you think that Iran, this was just kind of a an appetizer of sources to what we could do. We didn't give you everything we could have. We didn't go after the tough stuff. This was just kind of a uh, of a message sending campaign more than an actual desire right. to, to get to targets. Well, explain to me the strategy behind that. Iran does not want a regional war. They don't want war with the Israel or the United States. And they were restrained because remember, all of this goes back to the Israeli attack on the Iranian embassy building on 1 April. Iran could have gone after an Israeli embassy, which is not protected by uh, Iron Dome. They could have done, uh, you know, a tit for tat kind of situation. They could have gone after other Israeli buildings elsewhere throughout the Strip that were not protected as well by the Iron Dome. Instead, they went to military targets that were directly uh, protected by the Iron Dome. Take a listen to something that National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said just over the weekend. Israel demonstrated again, as I said, that they're not standing alone, that they have friends. Uh, so the president's been clear. We don't want to see this escalate. We don't, we're not looking for a wider war with Iran. Um, I think, uh, I think, you know, the coming hours and days will, will tell us a lot. How likely is it or what is your risk assessment as far as America getting just dragged into a larger conflict, whether they stay out of this or not, dependent on what Netanyahu <laughs> does next? That's going to be the hard part politically because there are a lot of voices in the United States like John Bolton and several other people who are emphatic about wanting to go and strike Iran. They're like saying, hey, we should go after their nuclear facilities. Lots of folks doing that. It seems reasonable to me to think that that's one of the things that Netanyahu also desires to do. But he can't go after Iran by himself because if he gets into an extended war, this is a crucial point to understand. As good as those interceptors were, the Iron Dome, they are limited with how many interceptors they have. And if they get into an extended back and forth with Iran, because it's not like armies are going to be rolling across Iraq to fight each other. This is going to be a drone and missile and air power war. And Iran has a lot more drones and missiles than Israel probably has interceptors to take them down. And if they run out of those, then they become very vulnerable. So there is a risk for Israel unless they get the U.S. to go in with them. And that's what we need to make sure doesn't happen because it would be just horrible for our interests if we get drawn into a war. War is now political stability mm -hmm. for Netanyahu because people are, are reluctant to change captains in the middle of a war. So it, is he really scared of an expanded conflict? Of course he's going to have a response because the conflict kind of helps him solidify power at a time when he's never been more vulnerable. That's just the, the political reality of it. Now, whether that's actually his motivation or not, I, I can't say. But based on his actions all the way through this war up until now, it certainly seems that he's doing that. I would actually go a little bit further and suggest that, and I know this is the case for many of his hardline supporters in his government, that they say this is our best chance to take care of the Hamas problem, the Hezbollah problem, and the Iranian problem. So while we got all this going on, and already we got lots of opposition, but we'll never have a better chance to get it all taken care of than now. I think that is a destructive, self-destructive position to have because they can't do that. They're already building future insecurity for themselves, how they're handling the Hamas situation. And if they try to add in the Iranian, it could be catastrophic for Israel, but it does appear that some think that's the path they want to take.